Hey everyone, Brian here from Exact IT Solutions coming at you with another video during Cybersecurity Awareness Month 2020. Today is October 20th, 2020. And uh, before we get into today's content, which is really exciting, um, please uh, check out all of our videos here on our channel. And if you like anything that you see in this video today, you're entertained in any way, or I educate you in any way, uh, we don't ask for any kind of fee, we're not paid, and we're not sponsored to do this channel. So all that we ask is that you hit the like button, and if you would, share our content out to your friends and family. Uh, if you're so inclined, hit that subscribe button. That really helps us out with Twitter, and let it, or with uh, YouTube, sorry, and uh, letting YouTube know that you like our channel and you like the content that we're putting out. Uh, it also motivates us to put out great content like we're going to do today. And today we're going to talk about uh, the Twitter uh, invest hack that happened back in the summer, back in July. Uh, the New York Department of Financial Services has uh, put out a their investigation or put out a, a report re uh, surrounding that with some interesting insights that I would like to share with everyone. And then a warning along those same lines with what we're going to learn with the Twitter hack, a warning from the FBI about some, some things that are going on that are very similar to what we saw with the Twitter hack. So like I always say, you can learn from every hack and that's what this channel tries to do. It tries to educate you on what went wrong with certain hacks and certain cyber attacks so you can do better in your workplace and your environment and help in this battle against cyber criminals. So without further ado, let's get into the content. Okay, so let's get into it. So what we have here is an executive summary that I'm going to kind of briefly go through um, that showed up on the New York State Department of Financial Services website um, about four, five days ago or so. Um, and the... Uh, it's an investigative report into the infamous Twitter hack of July 2020 um, and it revealed that attackers use social engineering skills and phishing links to dupe remote Twitter employees into providing their credentials. So what the report basically goes in to say is on July 15, 2020, a 17-year-old hacker and his accomplice, accomplices seize control of dozens of high-profile users' accounts, including Barack Obama, Kim Kardashian West, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Bill Gates. And if you remember, they basically went onto these accounts and told people that they are going to give back dollar for dollar anybody who sends them money. And they provided a Bitcoin address. And unfortunately, some people got duped into this and they were able to steal over $118,000 worth of Bitcoin uh, from these unsuspecting users. So let's dig into, now that we know a little bit more, how the, these, these guys, these 17-year-old these kids and not even adults, managed to do this. Um, and this, in my opinion, is, is what we call a social engineering type of hack. It's a low-level type of hack. Uh, when we talk about different hacks on this channel, we talk about ones that are done by really sophisticated and well-trained technical criminals. Uh, and then there's ones like this that are carried out by neophytes who are just out there um, gaming the system, so to speak. They really don't have a ton of uh, programming experience or, or knowledge of networks and cyber cybersecurity to be able to penetrate networks um, like other cyber criminals that we know of out there. Um, and that's what we're dealing with in this case. So uh, the report goes on to say that according to the New York State Department of uh, Financial Services that, that the hackers were posing as Twitter IT department workers and they deceived several employees working remotely to access a fake VPN login page. It says that the Twitter hack started on the afternoon of July 14, 2020, when one or more of the hackers called several Twitter employees and claimed to be calling from the help desk of Twitter's IT department. The hackers claim 
They were responding to a reported problem the employee was having with the Twitter's virtual private network. And the hackers then tried to direct the employee to a phishing website that looked identical to the legitimate Twitter VPN website and was hosted uh, by a similarly, similarly named domain. So somehow these guys knew what the Twitter VPN page looked like. So they did a little bit of research. So it wasn't like they were, you know, um, completely, you know, low level in terms of their thinking. Um, they had to think ahead and, and try to figure out where does the Twitter employees go to log into the VPN. Now, I don't know if Twitter made that easy or not for uh, hackers to figure this out. Um, they could have just put it on vpn.twitter.com, which a lot of companies do. Um, not the best thing to do. You really want to obfuscate that stuff as much as you can, and you don't want to make it easy and obvious. Um, now, really good hackers who know what they're doing, that won't stop them. But 17-year-olds um, who are just looking to create chaos like this, these, this is stuff that you, this is why you want to obfuscate because you want to, you want to be able to hide things from people who are just basically going in their web browser and poking around and looking for things um, and just happen to stumble upon something that they can they can use to, to their advantage. And in this case, they were able to figure out what the VPN uh, page looked like for the uh, Twitter users. And then they were also able to create fake lookalike pages uh, on their own domains. So when they directed users to those pages, it really didn't raise any red flags because everything looked very, very similar. Um, the first red flag for me would have been the, the person calling me um, and explaining to me that they were calling because of a VPN issue. Now, if I put in a ticket or I put in a request that I was having a VPN issue, um, it'd be interesting to know how these 17-year-old uh, uh, 17 17-year-old hacker and his accomplices managed to find out that specific users were having certain issues with their VPN. Um, but in most cases, the people who were contacted probably didn't, weren't having an issue in the first place. Um, maybe the IT uh, or maybe the perpetrators made it seem like IT was working on a, a widespread issue and the users were just like, okay. But um, it's really important to know what the protocol and the process is for your IT department to deliver services. And there should be certain rules in place like they would never call you and ask you for information or they would never engage with you in this way or this is how they would engage with you and if they don't engage with you this way then that should raise a red flag. Uh, so continuing on, um, the report underlines that most employees entered their credentials on the fake web page allowing for cyber criminals to simultaneously log in to legitim legitimate Twitter website. Although these logins also require multi-factor authentication from Twitter employees, the cyber thieves convince them to authenticate, leaving Twitter's internal network exposed. So to break it down, what happened was a, a page for the VPN came up, they typed in their credentials, that sent the credentials to the hacker. The hacker then tried to immediately turn around and go to the real Twitter VPN page, log in, and he was presented with multi-factor authentication. He then asked the person for the multi-factor authentication code so he could then uh, get bypassed the multi-factor. Once he did that, he was able to get into Twitter's network and that's how they were able to carry out changing the accounts. Now, um, anybody, that uses multi-factor authentication, you need to know that the, the codes, the six digit code or whatever kind of code, uh, if it's a push notification or something like that, you need to know that you cannot do that uh, for somebody else. Like, unless you actually know the person who works at your company, uh, and even in that case, I would hedge my bets against doing this. The multi-factor code is for you to log in only. If somebody else doesn't have their own multi-factor code, 
And ultimately, you're responsible for that. You're responsible for the actions that were taken and you're responsible for giving that code out to somebody else so they can then log into the system. Uh, so in this case, we highly recommend that companies really consider their multi-factor authentication policy. Just don't deploy it and give people multi-factor software and say, here you go. You have to provide training around it and you have to have a process in place for it that spells out that you cannot share that code with anyone. It's for your use to log in to your systems with your username and password and anybody else within the company will have their own set of login and, and credentials, including IT, who would have their own set of credentials to do these functions uh, that they claim that they were trying to do at Twitter. So uh, moving on, um, it does um, they say that the department found no evidence the Twitter employees knowingly aided the hackers. Uh, the Financial Service Regulatory Authority added, rather the hackers used personal information about the employees to convince them that the hackers were legitimate and could therefore be trusted. While some employees reported the calls to Twitter's internal fraud monitoring team, at least, at least one employee believed the hackers lies. So um, it really doesn't matter if, you know, most of your IT, most of your company knows it just takes one person, as we see in this case. It takes one person to let the wrong person in the front door that causes havoc like this. And this was a major news story when it broke. And it goes to show you that hackers are creating these sites, they're creating fake, fake accounts, fake uh, websites. To all in the name of trying to get credentials so then they can perpetrate um, their attack even further against your organization. Now, they had VPN access or they had some level of access to these Twitter accounts uh, and, and, and the Twitter network. Um, you know, and quite frankly, it's not out of the realm of possibility that the access that they had um, Although they went into like the master Twitter management tool that Twitter uses and created these messages on these accounts, um, kind of begs the question of how long were they in there? Um, you know, what what could they have actually done if they were more sophisticated hackers? Could they have deployed ransomware on Twitter's network? Um, things like that. And these are the things that uh, you need to consider as business people and employees and companies. You know, be mindful that this stuff is going on and be mindful that somebody could try to trick you in order to get into your company and get into your network using your valid credentials. So moving on, I want to highlight um, something along the same lines, I would say, uh, as what we just saw there with the uh, Twitter um, fake website phishing scam that they were able to successfully perpetrate, um, at least a 17 year old was. Um, the FBI put out a flash and the FBI's flash is a warning that there are 63 spoof domains impersonating the United States Census Bureau. Uh, and basically what this, what this flash goes on to say is cyber criminals have registered fake U.S. Census Bureau domains to dupe unsuspecting citizens to provide personal information and install malware. Um, it was published in coordination with the federal government statistics agency and the FBI noted that they have observed, observed around 63 domains impersonating the U.S. Census Bureau. Um, and we can see that on the screen right here. And this is just some of the domains. I'll try to pull out on that so we can see them all. But you can see all the domains here in this alert that were released. Uh, and spoof domains mimic legitimate domains similar to what we saw with the Twitter VPN spoof domain. Um, either by altering characters within the domain or associating another domain with similar characteristics to the legitimate domain. Um, so like, you know, in this case, censusbureau.com or census-gov.us, they, they put a dash in or they misspell a word um, 
to make it seem like uh, it's something that is legitimate. Um, although the Census Bureau is working hard to disable these spoof domains, the alert emphasized the dangers of accessing lookalike websites, as we saw in the Twitter hack. Threat, actor, threat actors will attempt to exploit respondents and users of the data for financial gain and other nefarious purposes, like we saw with the Twitter hack, such as harvesting usernames and passwords, email addresses, and to spread malware. As part of the U.S. government's facility sector, the Census Bureau remains a target for both criminal and nation-state actors aiming to negatively affect the U.S. government and create distrust among U.S. citizens, the FBI added. Um, the warning also provides a list of recommended mitigation to help users and businesses fend off malicious activity. They go into um, they say things like, uh, where are we at here? Um, users should pay uh, close attention to the spelling of websites you access. Um, this is all of this information right here. Regularly patch operating systems and software. Make sure that the SSL layer certificate is present at the top in, the, in your security bar. Uh, the little lock at the top, you should see that. Uh, keep security solutions up to date. This is your antivirus or endpoint protection. Uh, also on your phones, make sure you have something. Use two-factor and multi-factor authentication where possible. Audit your business networks and your own network at home uh, for unauthorized remote communications and disable or remove unneeded software protocols any macros you may have in any any Word files or, or Excel files, uh, and 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 portals. Um, you know, just remove any saved passwords and things like that in your computer. Um, and if you suspect uh, any suspicious activity, they're asking you to call your local FBI field office or Internet Crime Complaint Center, otherwise known as IC3. So. I hope you enjoyed today's content, today's video. Um, I thought it was very good information that we received from um, the uh, New York Department of Financial Services around the Twitter hack, and then this FBI warning around the census information, um, spoofing websites, all being kind of interrelated. Um, and it just shows you how prevalent and how widespread the threats are out there today to uh, a lot of businesses and individuals and not only that employees of companies are a huge huge target so um, this uh, concludes our content for today if you liked anything in our video today if you were enlightened in any way if i made you think hit the like button uh, down below and uh, consider subscribing to our channel Again, we're giving away that $200 Amazon gift card at the end of the month to celebrate Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So if you're subscribed to our channel and you're 18 years of age and in the United States, you qualify to uh, win a chance at that card. Um, so that ends it for today, folks. I look forward to bringing you more videos later on this week. Let's make it a great day.